Hi everyone, Julie here and welcome to Sew and Chat for September. It's been a bit of a, I won't say interesting month, it's been a bit of a horrendous month. Um, I'm just going to cut some strips of this fabric that I used in my very first machine made quilt which is my green one my green throw rug with the roses and the dark green background this is the very last of the fabric from the leaves that are part of that quilt so I'm just going to cut these into squares and um, get rid of all the bits that are sticking around it um, as far as this month goes, or this past month, uh, the main thing is still no hip surgery, still no date on a hip surgery. I had, keep in mind that this surgery was supposed to have happened back in 17th of May, then was put off to the end of June, and now they've actually taken me off the waiting list at the hospital I've chosen. So the reason for that is because that hospital actually doesn't have an ICU unit, which, which is fine for normal things, but if something goes seriously wrong, then they'd have to transport you to another hospital. So basically the hospital is covering their backsides by not have, letting me have the surgery there. And not only that, I think I mentioned that I had to have a heart stress test, which was done in July. My GP, when I asked him about the results, said, um, there's one minor thing, it's nothing important, they'll just adjust the anaesthetic. Well... That was fine, I didn't worry about it. I Then the following time I saw him got a copy of the report and it said something about left something under stress 47% and I thought, well, 47% doesn't sound good. But he'd said nothing major. So, you know, doctors know best, supposedly. So I didn't worry about it. Then I get a phone call from the heart specialist who wasn't the one that said to have the stress test. He was the one that said I had to have the heart echogram back in May and he signed off on the surgery being done in May. Um, get a phone call saying to have a video consultation with him when he was back off holidays and he's now saying go and have an angiogram and he's not going to sign off on the surgery being done even at a different hospital until that's done and everything's good. So basically I'm sitting in limbo. The angiogram's being done not this coming week, the week after, which I've got to talk to the hospital people about this week. They'll contact me because um, I need to find out actually where in the hospital it's done and all the rest of it. Um, in the meantime, obviously, the pain hasn't got any better. My right leg's got nearly as bad as my left one, which is the hip that's being replaced. I um, saw this same GP that said that there was nothing wrong with the stress test. Saw him to get decent painkillers finally, because I wasn't going to do that while surgery was imminent. Um, now surgery could be three months away, six months, who knows. Um, and it could be that it's not going to happen. It could be that the specialist says, no, we're not going to do it. So what I've got is, went and saw the doctor, said, want some decent painkillers. He says, oxycodone, which I had when I had my knee replaced. And I thought, that's fine. He says, I'll get prescribed one that's got this stuff in it that stops you getting constipated. And I thought, okay, yeah, I'm not worried. Um, this bit's a bit wider. So 
gave me the prescription. I went and got the prescription filled. What I didn't know was it was such a low dose in case I had any side effects that it actually had no effect at all. So, in doubled what I was taking, spoke to a different doctor, doubled what I was taking, still no effect. And then saw my doctor and he increased the dosage. And so I've gone from 2.5 milligrams to 5, and then from 5 to 10, and that's 10 twice a day. So that's 20 milligrams a day. And all it did was it made me want to fall asleep all the time. I mean, I, I can sleep anywhere, anytime, normally. I don't need pills to make it even more noticeable. And especially not when you're trying to study. I should have still had to do that. Um, so, I stopped taking them because they weren't doing anything other than making me drowsy and giving me constipation. So I've gone, and while I was taking that, I couldn't take ibuprofen. I could only take paracetamol. So, I wasn't in a good state, obviously. So I, um, gave up on that, just stuck to the ibuprofen and Panadol in the afternoon. Not a problem, that's what I've been taking for the past, well, well over a year now. So, probably several years actually. So I, um, finally gave in the other day and went and saw a different doctor at the same clinic and said, right, need some different pain medication. I said, oxycodone didn't do anything. He says, have I had endone before? And I said, well, the other doctor said endone is oxycodone. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Well, yes, 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 at the end of the day. Gives me a prescription for whatever it's called. And what does it contain? Oxycodone, that's all it is. And this time I'm on five milligrams three times a day which is less than what I was on with the 10 milligrams twice a day. And I wonder that it doesn't bloody work either. So I've stopped taking them again because they were just making me feel sick. So I don't know whether that, that was because of the pain or whatever. So um, the doctor's phoning me on Wednesday afternoon to check if it's the right dosage. Well, I'm going to tell him it's the... So not only is it the wrong dosage, it's the wrong medication. Yeah, if oxycodone didn't work the previous time on a higher dosage, why on earth would this lower dosage work? I actually put in a complaint with the clinic about the previous doctor because of quadrupling my blood sugar medication and the fact that he said there was basically nothing wrong with the heart stress test and overall lack of communication. So they did get back to me about that and apologised and said they'll you know, do better in future, but bottom line is nobody listens to you. You know, this doctor, I said, no oxycodone, and that's exactly what this is. It just didn't have the other stuff with it for stopping you get constipated. So I thought, well, I might as well stop taking it before I do get constipated, and we take it from there. So that's the situation on my hip replacement on the surgery. Pain levels are such that some days I can barely even take a step, like yesterday and the day before for some reason. And here's me wondering how the hell I'm even going to be able to put my bin out. Today I did manage to put my bin out. I'm supposed to go to the senior citizens on Tuesday. On Tuesday we have like games or whatever in the morning. I was going to take my cross stitch and do that. You know, some people just knit or they play games or they play cards. Um, I've already arranged to stay for lunch, so, and I've got the money for that. Wednesday is the AGM and I'm actually going on the committee for assistant secretary, so I really should be there for that, so hopefully I'll be able to get there. Driving's become almost 
undoable but I'm hoping these two short trips this week and to the hospital the following week will I'll be able to manage that my friend can take me to the hospital the following week if need be so we'll just see how everything goes the senior citizens know that I won't be there much yeah you know, because of this because of my leg and because of the pain but I really should be there for the AGM so we'll see at least I'm managing slightly to to get about when I say slightly I mean very slightly I mean if I had a choice I'd be in a wheelchair but that's not an option not when you can't get in and out the house I am seeing I'm seeing a different doctor again, One, a woman I've seen before, still don't have 100% faith in her because she wasn't able to sort out one problem I had, um, but she's got to be better than the others. Um, seeing her at the end of September to have a pain management plan started and also a mental health plan. and. Then two weeks after that I'm seeing her again because I'll have the blood test done for my blood sugar because that's also another factor that they could stop the surgery because of. Um, I'll go and see her about that and also get a letter because I'm applying for public housing which could take years but hopefully with the mobility issues it might bump me up the list a little bit. Um, basically, I need a place that's got, you know, like a walk-in shower and handrails and all the rest of it. This is for my back, let alone my hips. So it is a long-term thing. Um, so I'll get her to, and it needs to be in this sort of region because that's the only place I've got any friends. So I'll get her to do that letter at that time. So I've got two long appointments. And that's that. One of the reasons for doing public housing application is rents have gone absolutely through the roof. Even out where I am, somebody asked to describe where I am. Um, I'm in a country town, it's probably got a population, I don't know what the population is, probably 10,000. Um, it's a, nearly two hours east of Melbourne, so heading out towards the coast. And Melbourne's right on the bottom of Australia, not as far as Tasmania, which is that island, but it is on the bottom right-hand corner of Australia. So, yes, I'm about an hour and 50 minutes or so if I was to drive into Melbourne. There's a direct train line, if I had to do it, not that I do. Um, so it's a country area, um, predominantly um, dairy cattle, so no sheep in this area, um, it's, it's all cattle, be it before dairy, but predominantly dairy. Um, there was a, in the next town was a huge coal mine, open cut coal mine, but it's since been closed, so unemployment's rife in the area. It, um, you know, I so said there's high unemployment, there's, um, not a lot of good things to say about the area. Um, climate wise, it is, um, it's, it's not bad. It's, um, average days at this time of the year so we're talking beginning of September so for Australia that's coming into spring um, we've had a very cold winter or cold you know for Australia um, we've had a cold winter um, even now temperatures are you know three or four in the early morning these are Celsius and about 15 during the day so people who think Australia is hot all the time um, it's not that Wildlife, lots and lots of native birds about. Um, if you go out a few more kilometres or just go out into the bush areas, 
Um, there are kangaroos. Um, you see the odd wombat, either dead on the side of the highway or I've seen them crossing the highway. Um, so yeah, so it is rural areas. It's not, it's not remote country towns. It's not that bad. You know, the, the town that I'm, my, you know, this town, the, the town is called Moe, which is spelt M-O-E, if you want to look it up. And unlike in The Simpsons where M-O-E is like Moe's Bar, this is actually pronounced Moe. So don't go calling it Moe, because it's Moe. Um, yeah, there's a race course. There's a Kmart, which is a smaller version of Walmart. Um, three supermarkets. Um, some other retail stores. Not not a lot. Um, a few offices, post office. You know your usual businesses about the place. Um, nothing exciting. There's a McDonald's right on the where you come off the highway into the town. The highway that runs. From the other side of Melbourne all the way up all the way up to Queensland I think so right up the east coast of Australia this highway so we've got a McDonald's we've got a KFC and a Hungry Jack's which is Australia's version of Burger King um, so you've got the essentials you know with supermarkets um, and that's about it for the town most houses are single story there's a few two-story houses. There's no blocks of flats higher than, you know, two, two levels in, in the whole of the town. Um, there's no office buildings, you know, higher office buildings there or one or two floors or one floor with accommodation above. Not, not common. There's normally other offices above. But um, there's no, nothing exciting, nothing literally to write home about, but somebody did want to know what it was like. So what I've got now before I get on to my next topic, which is my studying, which I will stop this for a second then start it again. Okay, so what I've got is, I've got my tally card for covering hexagons. So far this year I've done 10,000 in since November, so 10,000 in 10 months. I'm not going to get a thousand done this current month, but I'll get a few done. As far as the hexagons go, these are all used ones that are because I have been sewing some blocks for the quilts together. I found a solution for the playing card ones to stop them being so slippery. And that is, if I take the card, I'll show it in another video, and some like 80 grit sandpaper, and just rough up a couple of strips on both sides of the card, and then stamp them out. And what it does is it gives you, I don't even know if you can see, you can see in the center of that one, there's some scratches. And they'll be the same on the other side, but you can't see it. Those scratches, are enough to actually grip the fabric so if I want to buy the cards I can buy them on eBay and this is where it's crazy because I can buy I think it's 20 packs of cards for like $15 if I buy two lots of them so 40 lots of cards for $30. Now each card will each pack of cards will do over 300 hexagons. If I'm looking for these underwater quilts, I still need another well, I need 15,000 for quilt 3. I probably need 30,000 roughly. So 10 packs of cards will give me 3,000. So I'm looking at 40, so I'm talking about 12,000 hexagons from 40 packs of cards. Keep in mind, once I get the pack, open up the pack, just lightly score it with the 80 grit sandpaper, which I've got, and I'll probably need to get some more. Do a whole pack at a time, then stamp them out. That's 300 hexagons. These ones... 
I did do that with a pack of cards. I also had some loose ones from when I first showed you these and they were sliding everywhere. Just a little bit of sandpaper and just rub it both sides. I wish I'd known about the use of sandpaper before I initially cut out 10 packs of cards. So I've got 3,000 hexagons in packs of 100 sitting there that need to be scored. But that'll happen. I'm not overly worried about that. They will happen when it happens. So what I've got now is I'm just going to start covering these. These are used hexagons. Using red thread. White threads be absolutely no good on this fabric. You wouldn't be able to see it. So I use the red thread and I'll just cover some of these while I talk to you. I haven't got a clue how many I've got but it will finish off this, um, this green leaf fabric which I've been using for seaweed. So it will get used in the quilts. So I'll finish with surgery and why it's not happening and why it may not happen. I will, in the next sew and chat, will explain how the angiogram went, which I've never had one before, and it won't be until after that one that I will know what the surgeon says because I'm not actually talking to him until the 14th of October. So still a ways before knowing if I can even go back on the waiting list. I can't even fill in the paperwork until all my medical record is then up to date so so much for that so that's that subject finished the next subject is my studying which has been going to be honest it's been going as well as my leg has um, I had a contract law assignment to do which I basically I failed the first one which was only out of 10 marks I think I've worse than failed the second one it's worth 40 percent and i'll be lucky to get 10 percent marks for it if that um 2000 words i only wrote like 1700 didn't put enough references in couldn't even fully comprehend the question even though i should have been able to whether i'm putting this down to pain and distraction or whatever I don't know um, so I fully expect to fail contract law this semester the other law subject I'm doing is legal professional skills and I had a first assignment I passed that was worth 15% I got 10 and a half for that um, the second assignment is worth 35% I think or 45 or something 35 um, it was like a, you have to have a, a legal issue or a dissertation or a, no, whatever. Um, and you have two topics you can choose. One is freedom of speech, which we actually don't have here in Australia, not in the Constitution. We have freedom of political expression, but no freedom of speech. And I was going to do that. I used that as my topic for the first assignment. But coming to do the second bigger one, I couldn't find enough relevant information. The other topic you can do is, it's called the Federal Integrity Commission, which is an anti-corruption commission, which we don't actually have a federal one of those. There was going, somebody tried to put one through Parliament, but it didn't get passed. But there are, each state level has one. So I did my second assignment on that before, on the state ones, they're called um, uh, Integrity Commission Anti-Corruption, whatever, ICACs, which I knew nothing about. So I managed to do the assignment on that and still obviously waiting for the results. And my final research essay will also be on that. But it's like I've been listening to lectures on it all day yesterday and everything. It, um, 
I still feel like a fish out of water when it comes to it, so I'm not sure how how it's going to go, but we'll see. But in the meantime, I've spoken to the university people. I'm not the university I'm studying through because I'm actually studying through two different ones, but the organisation that basically goes between you and the universities when you're don't go to university straight from school a lot of the time and so I've been talking to them about changing my degree from a law degree to a Bachelor of Arts because I'm doing ancient history through a different university and I'm doing really well with that and I'm really enjoying it so I thought well maybe I should just do a Bachelor of Arts because I'm never going to use a law degree anyhow but it's only something to fill in a few years as I'm heading towards pension age. So they say I can do that, but the university I do the history through only runs two terms, whereas the one I've been doing law through runs three trimesters. So basically I've got a third trimester coming up in October, October till the end of January, that needs to be filled in. I mean, technically I've actually done enough subjects to keep the unemployment benefit paid, but I'd like to do some subjects just to keep me occupied, even though the pain's probably an issue. So we've sorted out that I can use my law subjects. I haven't actually withdrawn from the law degree yet. I can use my law subjects as electives and... Obviously, I've done some ancient history subjects already. Add in more ancient history subjects you know, next year. But for now, if I want to do something next term without it being law, is I need to find something else. So I can do more criminology, but not through the university, either university that I'm currently studying through, but there's one that I can do a couple of criminology subjects. So that's what I'm going to do next semester. I have to get through this semester first with the law subjects. I've got this um, research essay for one subject and an exam for the other, which I don't know why I bother, but I'd, I'd rather have a fail on my academic record than a did not complete. So I will do both of those. My ancient history subject I'm doing really well at. We have weekly quizzes and I'm getting between 8 and 10 out of 10 for those. Um, first assignment is a five minute video presentation on an artifact and I did that, finished that the other day and I'm just waiting for them to open the thing that will allow me to submit it um, and then that's that one done. Once that's been marked, I did it I did it as an unlisted YouTube video. It's just a load of photos and a voiceover. It's only five minutes. That's all we're required to do. Is once it's done and marked, I'll actually link to it in next month's sew and chat. I'll put a link. I'm not going to it'll be on my videos and I'll do it as public, but I'll actually put a link into it or I'll mention it in the, at least. But at the moment, it's sitting in my videos and the only people that can see it are, because it's unlisted, are people that I send the link to, which for now will only be the um, coordinator for the course. But I will you know, put it up for anyone else to watch if they want to once it's been marked. So I'll do that, it's on a, it's on a little I'd say it's a statue, it's a vessel of a goddess found in Minoan Crete. So it's a little bit interesting if you're into history. If you're not, then don't bother to watch it. But I'll let you know about that and what score I get for it, hopefully by um, next month so in chat. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone for their continued support. It has made a huge difference and I do appreciate it. I um, still need to go and get a load of fabric, but just going anywhere has been so extreme. 
but it's not funny even sitting here now I'm surprised I've lasted this long I um, was going to look at buying a load of beads to sell at the end of the year because I can get a $500 advance through you know, the on my unemployment benefit in November and then you pay it back, I think it's $38 a fortnight for six months. Um, I was going to get a load of beads to sell because I have sold beads in the past. I put the remaining beads that I had, which worked out to be about $350 worth, you know, to sell on eBay last week, sold one tiny pack at $4.50, of which I think I made 50 cents profit. Um, postage has gone up since I last sold them and it's going up again and at the end of the day it's just not worth doing. So I've unlisted them all. Now these are like pony beads and little seed beads and in November instead I'm going to buy, well it's not cheap but a cheaper um, doll's house and some wood. I've got most of the tools I need already and I'm going to do a start on a doll's house and making furniture for it. So there'll be videos for that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to make a fortune from videos. I'm still averaging roughly $60 a month from YouTube. You know, now that it's monetized, out of that $60 a month, you have to have $100 worth to get a payout. So... For the past April, June, August, three three payouts, um, it's been pretty much $120, which is better than nothing, that's for sure. My next one will pay for my car registration. So that'll be late October. Um, it'd be nice if it was more money, if I could earn that, you know, 120 every week or a lot more than that every week but it's not that's it is what it is the numbers aren't going up subscriber numbers are increasing but only at the same rate they've always done so it's not like anything's gone viral and I've suddenly had a million views or anything like that you would certainly know about it if I had that happen but it is you know, it does just tick over and I check it each day. I've stopped writing down what it's at each day. But, um, and I should have put my glasses on to do this. Um, but, you know, it, it's ticking along. And it make, makes a difference. I have ordered a commode. I was going to get new shoes, but I thought, well, if I don't go anywhere, I don't need the shoes yet. So... So that's that. I've been um, still doing blocks for the quilt. I think I've been doing two or three blocks a week on the underwater quilt. I've run out of bits I can do on the bottom of number quilt number two until I get black fabric. So I resorted to doing some of the sky. The as I showed in that update on the underwater quilts I've run out of things I can do on the first quilt until I get that pale brown fabric to finish the the um the cliff and then I need the fabric for the sea so at the moment I can do some of the bottom of quilt number two probably another three or four blocks and I can do some more of the sky but I can't do um, can't do a huge amount so here's one of those playing card ones so yes I've been quilting and this is the first or the last bit of fabric that I've got to cover anything with so I've got um, I've got these to cover and then that's it till I get more fabric which will be next time probably when I go to the doctor at the end of September. In the meantime I've gone back to cross stitching which has been nice I can do that while I listen to lectures and 
and things like that or watch you know rubbish on not YouTube but things I've got downloaded different shows um, just keeps me occupied um, yeah hope hopefully I'll end up with more income you know not doing beads hopefully more YouTube income because rents come November the or late November the people that bought this house would have had it for a year and they did say see how we go for the first year and what I'm dreading is they're going to put the rent up crazy amount because that's what rents have done rents rents have gone from you know two hundred and fifty dollars to close on four hundred a week for you know a three bedroom house in this town I've got this house is a three bedroom house okay it's in not good condition it's got no garage it's got no shed anything like that but it is still three bedrooms and I'm only paying 200 a week so I I spent expect the rent to go up I expect it to go up to at least 250 I don't expect it to go to 300 because if it does that then I'm stuffed because you get rent assistance being unemployed or on the pension but there's a limit so if your rent keeps going up your rent assistance doesn't it's a maximum I think you know nearly 150 a fortnight and I'm already on that so if the rent goes up to 200 a week or goes from 200 to 300 I only get 850 a fortnight and there's no way I can afford to live if I'm paying 600 of that 850 just on rent. So I'd have to move and then it'd be a case of find somewhere that's cheap enough and there actually just isn't anywhere. You know, with just one cat I can live in a unit. Now I've just got the one. But not, you know, not if it's, yeah, the same sort of money at the moment. Rent seem for units seem to be about two sixty, which is still close on a hundred more than they were a few years ago. But we'll we'll see what we end up with, and hopefully they don't put the rent up crazy. I mean, if he wants to put it up to three hundred, I'll tell him that he have to find another tenant. And seems as I've been here for been here for over five years now is it's not going to be it's not always easy to find a reliable tenant so hopefully that works in my favor if not I'll just see what happens you know before I moved in here this was the sixth move in six years so moving house doesn't bother me you know and I could wouldn't bother me to move to a different location even but preferably not until I've had my hip done because yeah, we are talking yeah you know, it's hard enough to move house normally but let alone when you can't actually move so that's about it for for this um this video thank you for watching thanks for supporting me not sure when there'll be a next one probably not next week maybe the week after and that will just be, I don't know, cross stitching or something. Because nothing much is happening. I've got exam at the end of the month. I've got... Well, I'm hoping I haven't got much on because I really physically can't do much. I'm trying not to complain. I'm trying to keep positive. Because there isn't a lot I can do about any of it. But I will leave all this sitting here and I'll go back into the other room and sit in a different chair and get this video done you know uploaded and we'll take it from there so thank you very much and i will see you on the next one